Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers. In today's episode we're going to take a little look at number two of a job lot of lawn mowers. It's a little mount field um, with a self-drive. It's in pretty rough nick but for a tenner I can't turn it down even just for the spares, the carburetors, the tanks, bits and pieces. It's, it's all it's all gold I tell you. Um, but we might be getting a little lawn mower running. If it runs it'll be painted with some amorite just, just touched up literally. But these, these aren't going to be expensive lawn mowers. They're just literally going to be cheapos to, to get chucked out and get sold because this is silly season. People are selling lawnmowers for a silly amount of money and literally just can't can't compete with it. Once it dies off a bit more, um, the prices can go back up, but this time of year, everyone's selling them. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's check out this little tiny Mountfield lawnmower that needs a bit of a paint job. Right, so here it is, um, little Mountfield. Uh, what is it? 474? 474SP. Um, it needs a new fuel cap because the fuel cap is uh, is done. But we might be able to plastic weld that, we shall see. If not, I might have some spares knocking about the place. Let's put a bit of fuel in. It's had a new pull cord by the looks of it. As I say, the tanks are completely empty on these. There's no fuel in them. I don't know if I can replace, I don't know if I can spare that. We should see. It's had a new fuel hose put on it as well. That I can see. So the fuel hose is not standard. We haven't got a leak, which is good. Put air filter on it. A bit wet, that's just where I jet washed it off. It's missing the top lug off of there, but I have a spare one of these air boxes. Although it's functional. Right, let's um let's see what happens if I'm fired up. So it runs. Um, do you know what? I think someone just threw it out because it looks a bit tired, maybe. Um, so let's get a bit of a facelift. See what we can't do. I'm going to look for a new tank cap. It wants a bit of a carburetor clean, got a bit of a hunt to it, and the self drive is working. It's all been jet washed off. It's all dried out in the sun, so it's ready straight away for a quick lick of paint. All I'm going to do is just going to paint over the entire deck with some um, amorite rust um, paint. That's all I'm going to do. Just give it a new lease of life. Um, and we'll go from there. This one's 2008 uh, engine on here. Uh, we'll check the oil, all that sort of good stuff. Let's get it into the shed and see what we can't do. Right, so all in all, not a bad little machine. As I say, bit of um, bit of paint flaking going on. Gonna remove some of these stickers because there's water trapped underneath there where I jet washed it off. Um, it's most, mostly dry. I've got most of the paint flaking off with a jet wash, you know? So all I'm gonna do is literally, um, is cheat a little tiny bit. I don't want to invest no money into these because um, they're uh, they're cheap lawnmowers. Remember last year I did a silly season episode with eight. I bought eight mowers for next to nothing. I think I managed to get all eight running, which is great. So all I'm going to be doing is um, taking the. I might leave the engine on. We should see. I might no. I'll take the engine off. Engine can come off. Okay. Disconnect all the cables. Engine off. Blade off. Wheels off, I think. If I can just get the, the axles, the wheels just to come off itself, and I'll just paint around it, everything else. I'm not looking at doing a fantastic job. This isn't going to be a um, you know a proper full spray job. This is just make it look nice, okay? I shall mask up areas that I need to, and apart from that, this deck's just going to be painted um, on the top. So look at the underside. The underside is actually in much better condition than the, than the top side, which is good to see. 
The blade is battered, needs a new edge on that, just like the other manifold was done in the last video. Um, but apart from that, it's done, and I need to do a little carburetor clean because it has got a little bit of a hunt on it, ever so slightly. It may improve with the cap, um, new cap on there, because then the tank can pressurise. Uh, but we'll go from there. So step number one will be um, take the engine off because I want to get right up inside here and do a proper paint job on it. Um, and I've got the Amrite black hammered, which is what this is looks. So this is a Amrite grey. So this is going to be black by the time it's finished, but it will look pretty good when it's done. So disconnect the engine, take that off. You know how to do that. There's three bolts underneath. Um, just undo those. Disconnect the cables. Engine comes off. If you're not sure, there's other videos on how to do that. Um, on the other videos, I just want to double check to see. Do you know what? I may not need to do a carburetor clean. I've just seen that the cable for the throttle was just touching the governor arm. And on these, they're renowned for it. If that governor arm is touched by the cable, they rev too hard, don't rev high enough. Let me just try and fire that back up. So that's fine not a problem so engine off as i said and then we'll uh, get just to paint this deck up best i can i want to set, remove some stickers and super glue them back on or whatever just to uh, tidy it up but by the time we come back the engine will be off and we'll be, we'll be painting right engine's off box come off with it as well it's always nice uh the underside in here um was absolutely full of grass and an ant's nest in there as well so that's now been binned and got rid of i've got to clean out behind the um the gearbox that's got all be um cleaned out as well yet so i'll do that in very shortly take it outside with me a compressor and blow all that stuff out but now that's pretty much what we're left with so in fairness if i can keep this um, mount field sticker as is mask up that and then just give it a bit of a blow off bit of a dry off and uh, we'll be good to just start painting take the wheels off where necessary and paint it up so let me get this mask up i'll get some of the wheels off the front axles in particular um that sticker there i don't think it's going to be savable we should see it's pretty much coming off already so i'll take off in one in one go yeah we can give it a clean up and that could be restuck so put that to one side <coughs> and then we keep the originality of it and uh we'll just go from there so a little bit a little bit of um sanding where necessary just with the old drill of a wire brush just to clean it up and uh we should start painting Right, all masked up, and literally going to slap the paint straight on. So a bit of a bit of a you know a cheap cover up, but this amorite hammered covers really really well, um, and it's just literally just to prolong the life, give it a bit of a better appearance. Yeah, <laughs> I've got my little Riley boy here. Come here then. Here comes my little Riley boy. Daddy? Yes, buddy. You. What you got there? Come on, man. Okay. <laughs> superhero. Super, come on, my superhero. You are my superhero. For you. Superhero number one. Is that for daddy? Yeah. Come is on, that, you. Is that for mummy? No, well, that's for daddy. Oh, is it daddy's? Is it not father's day, is it? No. Oh, I, hey. just, I, I was just. I don't, because, you some chocolate. Just because I'm a daddy. You are fantastic. Come on, where's you? What you need to do, yeah. congratulations, what you need to do is put that in the fridge for Daddy so it's nice and hard. Stick it in the fridge and Daddy will have it later on with, with his bit of lunch and a bit of dinner. Yeah, yeah, wait, yeah, what's up? Fantastic. Go and put some top on, run around in your, in your PJs. Bye, guys. <laughs> Ta-da, boy. Come on, where's you, Daddy? Yeah, we miss you too. <laughs> Bless his little cotton socks. Just been down, just, Mum has just been down the shop and got me a superhero's Toberone. I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a weakling when it comes to Toberone. I must admit. So literally, all we're going to do with this, as I just said, we're just trying to improve the appearance of the machine. The engine runs. Wants a little bit of a service, maybe, and just a bit of a bit of a touch up and a bit of a carburetor clean. And all we're going to do is just go around best I can, just to improve it. As I say, cheap mower. Don't want to spend too much money on it. And these mount fields are brilliant with this hammer right now you can 
buy the silver hammerite as well. And I've been informed that if you buy a black one and a silver hammerite, and if you mix it up to around about 75% black hammered hammerite and 25% silver hammered hammerite, you get roughly this gray sort of color. But uh, hammerite is about 24 pound a tin for what I've got here for a medium sized tin. And uh, I've painted about four to five mowers so far with this stuff. Now, as long as you're quite particular on where, where you paint it and the coverage, you can make it look like this is the color it's supposed to be. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. You don't want to sit and watch, watch me paint. I'll get it painted. It's gonna have about two coats. And then I'll come back when it's done. We'll have a little look at it, see what it looks like. I'll take the wheels off. So I'll get up inside here and the back wheels as well. That's what will come off. I might try and leave the flap on if I can. I shall mask around that possibly. And uh, we'll come back when the, it looks a bit better. Yeah, oh my Lord, what do we have here? Yeah, a cup of, cup of coffee, on the paint, it's wet my sweetheart. Cup of coffee, sandwiches, crispies, can of Coke. Mrs. Mrs. P's got a new dress on today. She's looking stunning. Here she is. Thank you very much, baby. Daddy, yeah. Do it day. No, I can't. I've got, I've got my lunch. I've my lunch. We got. I've got um ham. I oh, know chicken. Chicken with fins and some crispies. Chicken wings. Chicken with fins, not chicken wings. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I'll see you in a bit. Okay. Yeah. Can I? Yeah. Where are you going, Boa? Hey. From Mountfield. Mountfield. Are you? Why are you? Why are you working? Graham. Bye, Dad. Yeah. Ta-da. Nice bit of lunch. Very nice indeed. Right, um, so far so good. Um, you know, it's not looking too bad. Um, I'll bring it back in, you know. That's all, all that side's been done around there. Paint, we'll take the wheels off, um, paint around, uh, do a bit of a sticker, and um, I'll carry on. I'll eat my lunch, carry on, and uh, time we come back, it should all be painted and have a second coat put on it. But uh, at the moment, it's looking 100% better than what it did. Right, and that's the second coat now done. <sighs> a little bit of grass, man. I'll put that weed on, that's a bit of a shame. I might get off in a bit when paint dries. It's not. It's nowhere near dry yet. Let's try and remove the masking tape. If I'd be so bold. And without taking the sticker off, be good. Because the stickers are only, only like a foam sticker on these, and they're not. They're not on brilliantly. I don't think that's that's not me. That's where the uh, the silver's come away. But uh, it looks better. It looks a hundred percent better than what it was when it first came here. Um, just got to get rid of that bit of grass just there. That's off of here. Let's see. Um, so happy with that. That's now got to dry. I've masked it all up around here, so there's no there's no paint spills up at the top end. Uh, but that balance better, right? Eh? So um, hopefully we get the engine back on. Um, have a look at this carburetor red tatch it all and um go from there so i'll get the carburetor off the engine separately this can go outside to dry It'll dry much quicker outside than the fresh air um and then we'll have a quick look at the carburetor right here's the old engine let's take my cover off again be a bit of fuel spilt now because it's been tipped up on its side i should take the fuel out when we go to um refit it i don't wet fuel burn straight onto that uh, wet fuel I don't feel going straight onto that, um, that paint job. Right, so this carburetor is just slightly hunting. Nothing excessive. But I'm guess guessing, much like most stuff, it's just been sat. That all comes off. What we got here? We've got cable ties on here. We've got clips on here. We've got all sorts on here. That pipe's probably rock hard. I don't know if I've got a pair of uh, grips that would uh, not stop that fuel flow. What do I do with my little forceps? I must have two or three sets out at the moment on different machines. So I might use a pair of mole grips, which I don't really like doing. I've got some not welders ones here. Just to shut that fuel supply off. About 
Uh, that'll do. Okay, that's that. <clears throat> Let's get a pair of long nose pliers. To been enjoying my lunch that Mrs. Peter's brought down. It's lovely. About 45 clips on here and all sorts of stuff. Let's try and get rid of some of this stuff off of here. It's a wrong size fuel hose, that's why. It might be a cut off job. There's another bit of a, a bit of a mission on here. That's that one off. Got one more to go. Take a little green cable tie. I've got three cable ties and a clip. And that's now off. Okay, let's remove the choke linkage. That comes off. And then the carburetor linkage at the top, tip the carburetor around. And off it comes. Carburetor there, let's put it up on the bench, see what it looks like. Right, new battery in the old GoPro. Quite excited really, because I, I ordered some, um, I've got, as you know, I've got a GoPro 7. Just really good, nice camera, I like it a lot. I pay second hand money for it. Um, but I picked up some some imitation batteries from China for it. I think they cost me about 20 quid. Three batteries and a charger, a block charger, um, for 20 odd quid. And I've just been testing the battery life and I managed to do one and a half videos on one battery, which is really good. Um, they're gonna be about an hour long video. The time I edit them down, they're gonna be about half hour. Uh, but it just gives me a time now that I can I can now spend rather than having a big power bank and continually charging the battery. So, God, that's on there. That did not want to come off. Lots of rust and water in here. I like to try and keep the keep the stuff in so I can see what's going on. But yeah, a lot of rust in this one. Yeah, look at that. Look at that yummy stuff. That's why I didn't want to run. The O-ring's a bit knackered. Look at that. That's yummy. Let's get all that out. We don't want that in there, do we? Look at it. Big, big piece of something there. So that'll have a wire brush. Let's try and bring it back. I've got some O-rings for these. And they seem to be working quite well. I bought a multi-pack off of Amazon. You can just punch in O-rings. Um, you get like a multi-pack turn up. I'll show you what I've got in a minute, but they work quite well for all of this. So that'd be why this carburetor was ever so slightly hunting. It was because so much crud in it. All right. Well, the bowl's a bit more, a bit better now. Let's um, have a look, a look at this, uh, this float assembly and what have you. So this is the SV150 engine or the RV150 engine if you're not sure on the carburetor. It should be LHP16, should be. Uh, yeah, LHP16 carburetor. Come on, that's got to come out. It can't stay in there. That's coming, but it's gripping. Uh, that's coming now, good. Right, this main jet's got to come out. Because that would be the reason why it's hunting so badly. Oh, I just fell out. That's, that's unusual for a carburetor to do that, unless someone else has been in there, but I very much doubt they have given the state of the carburetor. So I'm going to run some stuff through all the holes and orifices, make sure it's all running where it should be. That's not, that's blocked. Is it blocked? Is it coming out? Not yet. We're going at a slow jet when that comes out. Right, quick compress off and I'll come back. Okay, carburetor has now been, had, been a bit of a clean off. Uh, it is the LHP16 um, uh, carburetor. No slow running jets on these. Um, they're not on these ones. So that's now been blown off and compressed. Just want to double check the eye of the, the hole on this jet. Yeah, it's got a nice big hole. Um, just going to run it through again. Um, and I think the main reason was is that the, uh, the fuel was being obstructed by the um, butter float and what have you. That's why so much crud in there. I might have to do a bit of a tank flush. Oh no, there no fuel in it, was there? So give it a quick little clean out. That go to one side. 
and then we're going to go forward and just do all the little tiny holes on this um, on this tube. Let's make sure they're all unblocked before we clean them out. Come on, baby. Yes. Let me get some more files. Oh, that one's blocked. Yeah, some of these tubes. Some of these are blocked. Oh. A lovely lunch from Mrs. P. She's come and give me a, a lunch. That's cool. A bit of WD 40. That's now all been done. All running exactly how it should. Block the end up. That's good. We like that. There's a the main jet. That's better. We like that. Carburet has all been compressed off. Uh, there's a hole there on this one. Which goes out the front of the car because this is throttled out the top. One around the other side here. Through the main feed. Back down through the tube. And that's that carburetor done. Very simple these carbs, the LHP 19s. Nice little carb. Let's get an O-ring for it. Uh, where's my O-ring case? There it is. And I bought these off of Amazon. These are about 16 quid maybe, somewhere in there. I can't remember the price exactly. Nice big set of O-rings. Uh, so normally, these babies are the ones that fit these carbs. Yeah, that's the one. And that's a one indeed. We like that. Let's give that old uh, float a bit of a clean. Don't want it going back with no grubby stuff on it. That goes into there. We're going to put that into there. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, love my fun. There you go. Right, that goes in there. Tube goes in. That's the narrow, the long spout end goes in first. Followed by the main jet. That goes in. I'm going to screw that on down. Whilst we're doing this, the old lawnmower deck is uh, is drying. I'm going to sharpen the blade as well. Just so it's sharpened. The air filter will be cleaned out with neat petrol and then dried out. That's tight enough for that. Um, there's a main bolt now. Float is better. Uh, as I always say, when you've got the feed coming in, the little tiny 8 10 mil bolt goes opposite. Yeah, when you want to flood the carburetor, you're not getting no fuel for it. Let's just sit that down. That is the right size o ring for that. Uh, it's going to go about there. Stick that onto there. That marries up. This didn't want to come out of there originally. So the threads are a little bit worn on this, I think. Be a little bit careful. Let's grab a 10 mil. I'm just going to wind this down ever so slightly. It's got to compress the new O-ring that's on. Don't go too mad. Just nick it up, and about there, that's it. Don't overdo these, and that new O-ring is now compressed all the way around and formed a good seal. I might just go just a touch. That's it, no more. Um, otherwise, you strip that out. Uh, that's going to be done by hand, just in case we've got a flood of carburetor later on. Just nick it so it doesn't leak. And that's our carburetor now done. So now we can fit that back to the engine. What I may do is fit the engine onto the deck first, and then that way, I went in all the dirty stuff, and then that way, um, when I go to put it on, we'll have no fuel leaks. So let me get the blade sharpened, let me um, refit the engine and what have you, and then uh, I'll come back to you. Okay, lawnmowers are back together. Um, got a better spark plug in there. I've got to fix this fuel cap next. Um, I'll take my hose off. Um, it's just one of these typical ones that just basically split. So as long as you've got the little foam filter in there, that stops the fuel from coming out. 
we need them. And all you've got to do is then just marry that up to where it needs to be. That's it there. I'm just going to use my, my um, soldering gun just to melt this plastic back to where it should be. And that will hold it. So I'm going to put it in a vise, give it a bit of a squeeze and just solder it up. I'll show you the process, but I have done it before. Um, I had to repair these. I don't have a spell on for it. And these are about four or five pound each. So um, that's that. But the rest of it's all been put back together. I'm um, just been out to buy another lawnmower too, just a cheap one. Uh, Briggs and Strand things just want to want to service. So uh, probably won't show out on the video. But this is now all dry, as it should be. It's not hard, but it's, it's dry. Um, looking quite tidy now uh, compared to what it was. A new lease of life. Done the blade underneath as well. That's all done, and put the blade cover back on as well underneath. I don't want to tip it up because if I get any petrol spill, then um, it's going to affect this paint until it goes hard. Um, so I'll get on and do this fuel cap now, and I'll show you how I do that. And then we're pretty much ready, I think. I want to paint the handles as well yet. Um, they'll be painted before, before it sells. So a bit of um, wire brush treatment on those. Give them a lick of paint um, just to pick them up. And then we're nearly there. So get this done, I'll be back in two ticks. Okay, I've got my soldering gun warming up. It should be pretty much there by now. I'm just going to line this, um, this fuel cap up to where it needs to be. Take my soldering gun out, lay it over the back. And all I want to do is just literally just put some pressure on this on this cap, not too much, because I don't want to split any more than what it needs to. And literally I'm going to start, it's going to be about there I'd say. And just get with your soldering gun, literally just want to run a line around where it's um it's broken. On the higher edges, what you can do is actually eat into the plastic just to form a seal. Um, it'll all be sanded down a bit later on so it doesn't catch your fingers when you undo it. And just slowly start to work this in. Now you can use zip ties to add plastic if you want to. But we'll see how we get on. Uh, this is one of the best ways I've found to uh, repair these. As I say, four to five pound a go, not worth doing. So I do one side and then bring it on over to the other side. Just give it a little squeeze in the vise, not a lot, just to hold it. And then start to work the other side as well. Because you want it to be airtight along this bit here, or it's going to leak. These are renowned for, for this, absolutely renowned for it. It's a flaw in the manufacture design. Just start to run all that in. Take a little bit of time, um, but time I've got. And once you once you sand it down, uh, you've been none the wiser. And if people ask, you know, why is it why is that all lot melted? You can just tell them. Passed it well, did it? Because it was leaking. So just be truthfully honest. So we're getting there. I just follow this process all the way around. Mind your fingers when you're doing it. You don't want to burn yourself. And I'll come back when I've done it. Right, so I've made a start. Just squeeze the cap in the vise ever so slightly. And then with the soldering gun, just start to plastic weld uh, the edges back together. And what we do after is we'll sand it down with some sandpaper, just so the edges are nice and smooth. Just start to work it all in, just to get all the cracks all sealed, sealed back up. Make sure it's well ventilated. I've got both my doors open in my shed. Could have a fan blowing on directly, really. Whilst you're doing this, there's a crack. There it is there, right across the top. Just heating it up. Once you've got it heated, you can then go back over it and just fold the plastic back over. And run it back. Just reforming the edges, making it airtight. Very simple procedure. It just, it just saves you three or four quid. You know, these these caps are three or four pound each, give or take. Not only that, but you've got to wait three or four days to get one. 
So once you've covered all the corners and you think you've got it to where you want it, you can go on the inside as well. I will do. I'll take the rubber insert out, just join it on the inside as well, just to make sure you've got a proper seal all the way around. Last bit to do, just around here, right across this front edge. So again, just melt the plastic so it forms a seal. Then just bring some of that plastic back. Like so. over the top. And you're looking just to just to smooth it all out best you can whilst the plastic is nice and soft. It's not pretty I must admit by the time you sand it down a touch it'll be fine. I think we're there. Let's have a little look. Right, all the way around, good seal. And now I'm just going to pull this little plastic bit out and pick that little sponge up because you want that. With that little sponge, it'll leak. And then all I'm going to do is on the inside, where the crack is, just going to run my soldering iron all the way around there just to reform the seal on the inside, just so it's done on both sides, not just not just the outside. Just keep running it round until you form an edge. Mind the threads, you don't want to knack the threads up inside. Just keep running it round. And eventually it's all just smoothing together. I'm nearly there now already. And that was just all folded into one. Something like that. Put the foam bit back on, on top, and then put the cap on. The foam can go inside first. There's a little hole for that. Let's try and get it in there. That's it. And sit the little plastic cover inside, all the way down. And that's it fixed. A non-leaking cap. A bit rough around edges, but sand it back a bit, uh, just for a bit of sandpaper, and that'd be good to go. Right, fuel cap's back on, sanded back a touch. So not, they're not pretty, but it does a job. And it will uh, it'll stop the uh, fuel cap from leaking. Do it up. Now, that's why, this is why these snap, people just do them up, they absolutely wrench them on there, but that's tight enough. So as I say, it doesn't look pretty, but you just tell them, you know, if they say, why is the metal, just say, I have plastic welds on it, because it was split. So nothing wrong about fix, in my eyes, that's good enough. Pull cord's fine, I've got to paint the handles yet. I should do that before I take it outside. Um, based on air filter's been done, uh, all good to go. I think I'll check the oil and uh, paint the handles and we'll go outside. Right, and there it is. All done, all finished. Um, to be fair, yeah, I'm pleased with it. Um, the mower looks like it's uh, not that old. The wheels show the age. Could do a spraying the wheels up, really. Um, but it is a cheap £10 lawnmower, hoping to sell for a profit. Let's now see how, how it all works. I'll clean the grass box up, done the fuel cap newish spark plug it's not brand new it's a second hand one cleaned up air filter's been cleaned carburetor's been cleaned all's been done blade's been sharpened and balanced uh belt's all back on good to go so let's now just try and run it up see if it hunts or not
tad bit smoky, but it's got to do a run um, to make sure that uh, it's been tipped up. So it's got to kill the smoke out of the exhaust, um, all that sort of good stuff. So I'll give it a quick run and uh, it looks like it's running pretty nice. So super happy. Okay, that's that little Mountfield lawnmower now all up and running and looking tidy. It's on its test now and doing absolutely fine. I have just adjusted the throttle slightly. I um, may have to go back and just tweak it back down again just a, a hair's breath because it's not quite ticking down like it used to. Tick over is slightly too high, but I like this run just a little bit quicker um, than what I think they're designed to do, just because otherwise you'll be sitting there forever walking behind it and it's quicker to push it than it's actually to drive it. But um, I'll adjust this a touch, but I'm super happy with it. For a 10 pound lawnmower, it should be quids in. Um, so super happy, it's now going to be up for sale very, very soon. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mowers, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell and set notifications to all. That way you'll be told that I'm um, on another video or done my satellite weekly live stream which starts at 6pm UK time. Any comments you've got down below, you know where to stick them. Leave me a thumbs up where you can, much appreciated, helps all the growth of my channel. I look forward to seeing the next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until then people, don't forget, more importantly, take it easy.